In this demo, I'm going to show you how to paper a sealant. So this is just a recap this bit, and this is how to do the fold. Now the fold is the same when you're cross-lining or hanging paper to a sealant. And that fold is the concertina fold. Okay, so make sure you don't sort of brush your paste out too much. Make sure you put plenty on. So then it's just one small fold. Make sure the edges are aligned or else the edges will dry and they won't stick. Lift up always from the top of the paper. Down. Again. And I'm making sure all the edges are aligned. And then with this last bit, I'll just do a small fold. So the paper in a ceiling, Obviously, the lighter weight the paper, the easier it's going to be. We're going to start with a lining paper and then we're going to finish with a blown vinyl. So, all the edges now are aligned. There's just one small gap there. And to stop that drying out, fold up your paper like that. Now, seven or eight minutes this lining paper has to be folded for. So, I've got this one and what I've got over here. Is another piece. So I'm going to leave that one to soak just while we do this other piece. Now when you're papering the ceiling you need to set up a rake, okay? You need to be able to walk from one side to the other safely so we don't want any trap ends, okay, and we don't want any gaps. So that there is all sort of platformed out if you like. All right, now a couple of things I'm going to show you here. This one is just a rolled up piece of wallpaper. You can use a piece of plastic, but I prefer a rolled up piece of wallpaper, really nice and tight. And that's called a crutch. And what that's going to do is going to support your paper while you're up in the ceiling. You notice here, that's a lot thinner than the piece I've just pasted. It's a lot narrower. The reason being, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to compensate for where my ceiling rose is. Now I've took the ceiling actual attachment out. You've got your ceiling rose here. What I don't want to do is put a piece of paper where I've got to cut that out the middle. So two reasons I do this snap line. One is because if this edge is out and I just try and hang my paper to the edge, it won't be straight and I might have a gap, I might have an overlap. These are quite new, these cubicles, but on older buildings, that is not necessarily going to be straight. So the straightest thing you can do, the best thing you can do is put a snap line to hang to. Now where I've put my snap line is so that my next piece falls in the centre of there. Okay? Because if I'd have started from this edge and then gone here, that would be bang in the middle of my next piece and I don't want that. So I've snapped a line here. For that reason then, I had to cut my paper down, okay? Because I don't want to try and put it on here and have it all going over the wall. So, like that, yeah? On your crutch. Key to this is to keep your arms in the air. Once you start dropping one of your arms, that's when it's gonna go wrong. I'm going to found my machine edge, not the edge I've just cut, because that's going to go towards the wall. I'm going to undo my first piece like that. And just as you're doing walls, you always need your 50 mil wastage for your trimming. Okay. So everybody says it's going to be really difficult, but it's not as long as you keep your arms up in the air. So just like you do. When you do a vertical chalk line, I'm hanging this to a snap line across the ceiling. So, moving brush. On the line. It's up here. Like that. Then, you just take it, now it's quite lightweight this, so it wants to all fall off. Taking it like that, holding the rest up with your crutch, 
bringing it across the line like this. Checking it in. Always watch your step as well. So in the last fold, keeping it on the line. So there. So you've got a few things to think about, keeping it on the line, keeping the crutch in the air. And fold that last bit. You can see there where the ceiling runs out. So sorry, where the wall runs out. That's the reason for a snap line. Now that is dead straight. Another reason you'd need this is because if you tried to hang towards the wall and you thought, oh right, I need to get that straight there, it'll twist your paper. Okay. And a few times we put pattern papers on ceilings and you're gonna lose the pattern by twisting it, but it's not gonna match up. So that's the first piece on. Tuck it well in. Make sure that edge is nice and smooth down. Move them to there. And I'm just going to right into the corner on this. So we don't want any overlap. Don't want anything moving on. Right into the corners. And I'm going to trim off this edge. Now, because it's a proprietary paper, which means they're quite pulpy, you're not going to be able to use a board and knife. Okay, so you must use your shears. So nice long open cuts like this. One thing we're learning paper is if you're going to put a finished paper on top, you don't want it too long. You don't want to see your lining paper under your finished paper. Like that just like you would do with your walls. Make sure. Show you what any adhesive off before you smooth back. Like that. Next side. Go for it, a pencil. There we go. The thing with this is you need to pull it right back. Don't be scared. As long as you've got control of it, as long as you've got hold of it, it's not going to go anywhere. So don't be scared of taking it off the wall like that, look. Obviously, if you left it, left it alone now, it'll start to come off. And paste it well. If you're a bit skimpy with your paste, obviously, if you paste as you glue, it's not going to adhere to the surface. So, don't skimp on your paste, cleanse your paste. You need, still need a bit of slip and slide for that line and you want it to stay up there yeah. and then smooth back. Right, so as I've got my next piece, I'm just going to grab my next one and I'm going to show you how to put them up and the star cuts. So let's get me the crutch from down there. All your pieces open at your gap, all your folds on top of there, like that. So every fold now is on my crutch. The reason people struggle with ceilings is they don't keep this arm up in the air. So, first fold, open, oops, there we go. Lean it across like that and then up to with your wastage up to your last piece so keep this keep the crutch up in the air like that rolling brush should have that on me really Blech. should have a paper in it my joint now. Tuck it in. Getting the first piece on is the most difficult. A little bit there, looks like I've not put enough paste in. I'll make sure I go back to that. So your next one is obviously again, what I tend to do, I tend to hold the folds and then you can pull them that way. And then again, it's going up to the line. As long as you're not twisting, 
that should just fall nicely into place. Obviously you need a bit of paste on for a bit of slip and slide, if it's slightly off, you need to be able to push it into place. originally going to do it in a different um, angle. Right, the reason it's not butting up there is because I've got this area. Now this is my star cut. <coughs> Always do star cuts with shears. Don't do them with a knife. What you'll do with a knife is you'll just scratch the outer casement. So, you want to come so sort of here, Gary, up here, you might need to see it a bit closer. So, what I'm going to do here is... I'm just going to mark there. That's where I'm going to cut now. Okay, so that's my first cut up to the top. Okay, and instantly you can see how the paper is wanting to go that way. So what I do, I get my pencil, I do another cut, another cut. And what these are called, these are called star cuts. And again, you can go around like that as well if you want to. And again, like that. Actually, this has fallen different to how we expected it to actually. It's gone a little bit over, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to get it all with this piece. So if I go to this side now, again, put a mark there, go around, put a mark there. So I'm just releasing the pressure as I go around. Obviously you can't go around a circle. So I've got to put little, little marks in. You see now, them two pieces match back up. So that's how you go around any um, ceiling rows. Now what I want to do is I want to tuck it all in nicely and then I'm going to pencil round like this. Just drag your pencil around all them little cuts. Take it down slightly and you can see now why we call it a star cut because everything sort of comes from the middle outwards to the edge and now I'm just going to go around all those little pencil marks like that don't matter if you tear lining paper slightly to finish paper if you don't want to be tearing. Come down a little bit further. It'll be easy to tear it in a way. Like so. And just grab my sponge. Now obviously working with electricity, be really, really careful people that your sponge isn't wet. I should have left on now, look. This is the best one I've ever done because oh, I ain't got glasses on. See now. And that's how you go around. Start up. So now, that pressure's gone. That's the match up now. It was just stopping that paper because it was trying to twist. So that then butts up. slightly shorter you can for lining paper so if you want to cut it slightly shorter just cut the other side of your pencil mark and that just takes it a mil shorter 
if you were going to paint the ceiling you'd want it absolutely precise as I'm going to paper over this with a blown vinyl it doesn't matter, it can be slightly short now papering ceilings obviously is difficult but the reason we paper them is if there's any bad cracks any sort of um, unevenness and it tends to even it out either painting or papering when you line a ceiling um, it's always best to go one way with your lining paper and then the opposite way with your finished paper and that's for strength when we come to do the blown vinyl we're going to snap a line at the front of the cubicle and we're going to work this way and the reason for that is you always work away from your light source if you work towards your light source and you've got a slight overlap what happens is you get a bit of a shadow but if you work away from your light source you don't get the shadow so i'll explain that when we do the blown vinyl so that's your demonstration on star cut how to hang paper to a snap line and how to put two pieces next to each other this piece obviously i'm going to move all my rig for this piece i'm not going to video it it's put on exactly the same way you just need to cut this at the corner and then tuck it in just like you would do if you were hanging vertically